and also that he had a point deducted in a four-round bout. And so to win a decision, again, first bout, hour notice, point deducted in a four-round bout, all three, almost like uh, swinging with the two bats, you know, almost running with a weighted vest, with all that against him to pull off this decision. Hey, and I did, I, I do give credit to the to the Lamette camp for taking on the fight. You know, they saw a guy debuting, they thought they could pull it out, ended up being an upset. Okay, here he comes, Steve Merrill. We had fun talking to Steve Merrill yesterday. He's uh, from Fort Dodge, Iowa. And when I told him that I heard that there was nothing but cornfields in Iowa, and he corrected me, he says, no, there's soybean fields too. <laughs> he said, it's not just soy uh, uh, cornfields. Get it, correct, get it correct, Bill. Yeah. I think the best mustache of the evening. By far. Already goes to Steve Merrill. Hey. <laughs> hey, you're not too far behind. I like your mustache. <laughs> and I see you twisting it. Well, I cautioned him, though, and his uh, corner man, Mr. Powers, that. And now, ready to make his way to the ring from the right corner, Jordan Murphy. Now, listen to this crowd. Oh, my. Listen to this crowd. It appears to be about half the venue here. Oh my. For Jordan Murphy, I, I, I spoke to his fans and I said, wait a second, there must be some mistake. This is his pro debut. He hasn't had a career to build this kind of a base. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not here, the place absolutely exploded when they just had the name Jordan Murphy. Oh my God. And you may not see this from home. But there's like a hundred people with George Murphy t-shirts made for the event. Hey, Bill, I got you. Oh. I tell you what, and I told his family and his support group here that you don't get this kind of support by going around and being a jerk to everyone. You know, this is someone who you just get a feeling that he's not just an athlete, but he's a dignified individual. And when I did speak to him, his personality is so engaging. What a beautiful young man. He and I got a chance to talk horror movies of interest of both of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, from Goldstream Park in Hallandale, Florida, our next bout of the evening is brought to you by Bad Promotions in association with New World Title. This box scheduled for four rounds of professional boxing in the lightweight division. The three judges scoring at ringside, Carlos Sucre Jr., Carlos Sucre, and Vicente Rodriguez. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Sam Burgos. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black and gray trunks. He weighed in at 136 and a half pounds. A veteran of two professional bouts from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Here is Steve, the surgeon. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the gold trunks with black trim. And here it is. One of your 34 three quarter pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional debut from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Here is Jordan Cheeky Murphy. I tell you, it's mighty uncommon to see this kind of support on a debut fight. Yeah, I caution Steve Merrill. Now, I played a lot of Mike Tyson's punch out growing up, and he doesn't want to make this mistake of Von Kaiser and wiggle that mustache between each uh, punch because then, of course, his opponent would sidestep and counter. So he's prepared not to wiggle the mustache. We'll see. I, I, I really don't think he's nervous. He has 13 mixed martial arts bouts, and this is his second um, boxing match, so I don't feel like he's, he, he's, he has any nerves. And the crowd can't fight for you. That's correct. Good That's dad. correct. Good dad by Murphy. 
Jordan, very experienced amateur with over 110 amateur bouts. And that shows you how he was able to build that, that fan base before having a single professional bout. And in fighting that many amateur bouts, I mean, you have to fight so many styles from so many camps and training camps and areas of the world. And there is no picking and choosing. If you're open class, you fight whoever's there. Good jab, good sharp, sharp jab. Very quick reminder to Steve Merrill of those 100 fight experience that Jordan Murphy has. Oh, good right hand. Oh, oh, he and hurt. both of these fighters, like Hagler and Hearns, just letting oh, their hands go. Letting their hands go. Now, Jordan Murphy, yeah. this is the only problem with having so much fans, so much excitement, so much energy. He might go crazy and get caught with something he doesn't see. That's the only worry I have for Jordan Murphy. He could, you were talking about the, the calmness of Steve Merrill, and you can get too excited with your friends and your family. There's that old adage that orphans make great boxers because they're not worried about impressing anybody. Reminder, not at all. And, and he took Jordan Murphy's phone, best shots, and he's still the there. Oh, good left hook. Steve Merrill turns off call for a little bit. A little bit of low in the action, but when it goes, it goes. <laughs> See, moments like this, once again, you'll hear me repeat the jab, the jab, the jab, an educated jab, moving it up and down at moments like this. When there's nothing going on, that jab has to be pumping. And the jab, it's offensive, it's defensive, it's, it's feeling out your range. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's throwing off your opponent's rhythm. And obviously, just like all the young other, the young fighters coming up, his favorite fighter is Floyd Money Mayweather. Jordan Murphy's. Yes, Jordan Murphy, correct. Goes by Jiggy. You know, some fighters hear that 10 second. Oh. Some fighters hear that 10 second warning and they say, okay, let's wrap it up and get back to our corner. And these guys hear that 10, they say, oh, we only got 10 seconds left. Well, let's do this. I did like, I did like Jiggy, which I'm talking about Jordan Murphy. I like his upper body movement. I'm liking everything I see. And that comes with 110 amateur bouts. He's comfortable in there. The only thing, I, the only thing he's doing wrong in my eyes right now, he's, he's, he's pushing up the, he's, he's, he's doing too much way too much and I know he wants to get the knock out in front of all his fans but he has to calm down just a little bit just a little bit and you have to wonder if that's what Steve Galazzo is telling him right now hey you've got this easy take it easy let it happen his trainer Galazzo has been training him since he was eight years old I know being an experienced trainer that Galazzo is is telling him calm down you'll get the eight knockout. years old eight years old what took him so long to pick a sport you know, kids that young, they do baseball, they do basketball. I'm kidding, eight years old. He yeah. knew what he wanted, and he yeah. knew what he wanted yeah. young. Yeah. And he's showing it tonight. But not if Steve Merrill has anything to say about no. it. He'd love to be the spoiler of the story. Hey, Steve Merrill's coming to fight. Now, he, one thing he has to do is pick up that level. Jordan stalking his prey. Now he starts going down to the body. That's something. There you go. And what are, what's your thoughts on going to the body in a four-round fight? Of course, it's a strategic thing early in a longer fight. In a four-round fight, what are your thoughts about body work? Hey, body work is important in any round. You have to invest to the body. You're hurting him to the head. And I'm talking about Jordan Murphy. But the guy's not going anywhere. Now, guess what? Plan B, I gotta go down to the body and then bring it up to the head. And that'll eventually get the knockout for Jordan Murphy. Jordan Murphy, excuse me. 
The body's always important. And that's one thing I didn't see in the first round, but he's starting to invest in the body in the second round, something that I know his experienced trainer told him. Now that's, that is rolled a knockdown. Elevate. And this is where the referee says, looks at him, says, step forward, do you seem okay? But boy, Murphy comes right back. But Merrill's fighting back. Merrill's, Merrill's letting his hard. hand go. What a fight. Referee stops it. Sam Burgess stops the fight. You know, I saw Merrill fighting back. I saw him, I saw Merrill fighting back. He was fighting back, but he was getting hit with hellacious shots. Well, plus, I have no disagreements on the stoppage. And it's coming also, too. It's coming immediately after a knockdown. And so a lot of yes. times when you see a knockdown, you got to show something after that. And it was with a right hook to the body. He hurt him. Same thing I was saying. He was going to the head, going to the head, going to the head. Steve Merrill is a tough customer. As soon as he went down to the body, got the knockdown. We associate knockout shots with head blows and concussive blows. But uh, you're right. How many times do you see a body shot, a shot to the liver, and someone's legs go, go right out from under them? And their mind's there, but their body's not reacting. A perfectly placed body shot will paralyze your body. I've been hit with a couple good body shots, and I couldn't breathe, I couldn't focus, I couldn't think, I couldn't talk, I, and it hurts, it lingers. And the crowd, understandably excited. <laughs> oh my. What an atmosphere. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice round of applause for both fighters, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Gulfstream Park in Hallandale, Florida, your referee in charge, Sam Burgos, calls a halt to the bout at one minute, 50 seconds of round number two. Your winner by TKO, now 1-0 as a professional from Deerfield Beach, Florida, Jordan Jiki Murphy. And I got to meet Jordan Murphy's wife, quite a character, presented herself to me as his trainer. <laughs> and I said, oh, now I know you mean by trainer. <laughs> trainer in a very different sense, but. <laughs> hey, I want to see a lot more of Jordan Jiggy Murphy. I love what I saw. His fan base is phenomenal, and he has a huge following on TikTok. 200,000 followers. 200,000 followers. I don't think I've ever met 200,000 people. Neither so have I. Something. Hey, and super confident. When I interviewed him, I said, what would be your dream fight? You said Ryan Garcia, and you can get him next. And he's ready now, he says, for his second fight. fight. His second fight, he said, bring on Ryan Garcia.